Okay, hi everybody. We're a little late on the little recording process. So you're just going to have to read what the board says and catch up and get over it. Okay. The reason we don't add the exponents is because that these variables, a squared and a squared, are simply like an ID, identifying the group that we have present. For instance, in my family, the Salling family, there are five members. We have the daddy, we have the mama, and we have the three daughters. When we come around, people don't say, oh, hey, Salings to the fifth power. Okay. We're just the Salings. The same thing here. Think of it as a last name. These are identifying the families. This is a family of A squared. The family name does not change. We simply combine the members of the family. And the members are 2 and 4. So 2 plus 4 is... 6. Okay? When adding and subtracting, it's simply a name. Don't change the name. If I asked you to add these expressions, can you combine all three of those? There are two different families up there, correct? One of them is called A squared B, and the other one is called A squared B squared. So I've identified that there are two different groups up here. Now I've got to figure out how many members are in each of these groups. Well, in this first group, of a squared b, I have a plus 2 and a minus 6. What does that give you? And in the second group, all I've got is plus 4. Now, who just has the urge to say 0? Because negative 4 plus 4 is 0, right? But those are two different families, okay? You can't combine them. That's all you can do. That's a squared and b, a squared b, and a squared b squared having a barbecue. Okay, two families getting together for a little party, but they're not part of the same family. At the end of the day, they are both going home to their own places. All right, we did that already. Now, what if I said, okay, combine or simplify these expressions? Well, the first thing you need to take note of is that there are two groups here. Think of the groups as houses, families, families all right? And in this first group, basically, in our order of operations, we want to get rid of parentheses, correct? Well, since in the parentheses it's a bunch of addition, but nobody can be added together because none of them are alike, We've got to figure out what do I need to do to get rid of those parentheses. So I've got to identify, is there anything being multiplied by that first group? No. Okay, no. Nothing is being multiplied by this first group. Or actually something is. It's understood to be one. But when you multiply something by one, what happens? Stays Nothing. Everything stays the same. So on this first group, I can basically just drop the parentheses. Now in the second group that's in parentheses, once again, we cannot add any of those things together. But you do see that right next to it is a little negative 3 being multiplied. Which means that the answer to all that needs to be multiplied by negative 3, but I can't get an answer yet. So how do I... Thank you. I don't know what I wanted to say. Okay, I have to distribute. In order to get rid of the parentheses, I have to distribute. Be very careful. Are we distributing 3 or negative 3? Negative. negative 3. And when we distribute, we get negative 3x squared 
minus 12x plus 6. So I've gotten rid of all my parentheses. Now it's time to add the like terms together. Add or combine the families together. So first thing I'm going to do is identify the different types of families. All right. I've got an x squared family. I've got an x family. And I have a no x family. When the x squared family. Oops. I have 3 minus 3, which is what? Zero. Well, if there's zero x squared, do I have to put it? No, because no, they don't exist. All right? They were assassinated. Okay, and the x family. I have negative 2 and negative 12, which gives me? Negative 14. Negative 14. And in the no x family, I have plus 3 and plus 6, which gives me? Plus 9. And I box it off because that's all I can do. And I'm done. All right, so adding like terms, only if they're alike, and don't mess with the exponents. Okay, it's simply an ID, identifying the groups that are the same. We don't change the name of the group. <clears throat> Multiplying, however. In this case, I need to multiply negative 2x times every single member in there, which means that I'm going to have to distribute, correct? All right, so now we're going back to the multiplying variables rule. When you multiply variables, do they have to be alike? No. Do you change the exponent? Yes, because you want it to reflect exactly how many x's are being multiplied. So when I distribute negative 2x times 3x squared, I get negative 6x what? Cubed. Then when I distribute negative 2x times negative 4x, positive 8x squared. And then I'm going to finish off by distributing it to the plus 5, which will give me... Now, can I go any further? No. I cannot combine those terms. They are all different. So that's it. You box it off, and there's your answer. Okay, that's multiplying a monomial times a polynomial. Now, what do we do when we multiply two binomials together? Well, somebody who had a lot of time on their hands came up with a little shortcut called FOIL, which stands for first, outer, inner, last. And if you can say that FOIL means first, outer, inner, last, congratulations. But can you apply FOIL? Okay. You need to know what the first is talking about. What is outer referring to? And what do we do with the first? And what do we do with the outer? Do we add them together? Do we multiply them together? What do we do? You multiply the first term of each group together which the first term is your 2x terms. So we multiply. 2x times 5x is 10x squared. Then to this, we are going to add the product of the outer terms. Well, when you say outer, or when I say outer, hopefully you think of the very extreme outside, correct? Well, the outer terms are the very outside terms, the very first one, the very last one. And we multiply them together. 2x times 1 or negative 1? Negative 1, which is going to give me a negative 2x. To this... I'm going to add the product of the inner terms. Well, if outer means the extreme outside, then inner must mean the ones in the middle, which is 3 times 5x, or... And then finally, I'm going to add to this the product of the last terms, and that means the last one in each group. 